What's up guys? This is the Roverman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War. Let's play as the Knights of St. John. So to round off what happened last time, uh, we had a... <laughs> well, the Ottoman Empire decided I should die. They conquered Malta, then Madrid, and then England in rapid succession, closing down my campaign extremely quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have one last stab at this campaign because I do have a strategy in mind. I have a cunning plan. So let's get into it. And that's the reason why I sound so chipper. Because... So my first attack, I attacked Tripoli. Then the Ottomans decided to kill me and I died. Then I tried to attack Rome. And obviously the Catholic States also hated me in addition to, to the Ottoman Empire. And I also died. And then the longest it went was hitting Madrid and sparring over here, but then, in the end, the Ottomans killed me. So, back when I thought my Spain campaign was going to die, I started messing around in a different campaign, or with a different strategy. So, I revisited North Africa, <coughs> and came to the... Uh, I should have muted my mic for that. Uh, I came to the conclusion that the AI might have aggroed on me because when I take Tripoli... I have this direct border, and the AI really hates having a direct border with the human player, seemingly, in my experience. So what I did was I first hit Tunis, then I went west to Algiers, and I pretty much just spent a long time building up these regions, building up a religious building to help convert the population, and build schools to start researching. And I tried to foster positive relations with the Catholic nations which actually did help um, in the end I started suffering because I, I overextended against the Ottomans but I was getting towards the end of a casual play session and I was getting a bit dumb uh, but I'm going to try that again this time so let's take our ministers just ramp down our policy levels again just to make sure we uh, we get used to the fact we don't have much money although actually it's probably something I do I pro uh, I was wondering if it's something I probably do later on when I actually have regions that matter because someone also did point out which I actually didn't uh, clock was the fact that because I have Malta I will have no villages which means no top tier university which means none of these technologies so, in a weird way, at some point I'm probably going to have to make a decision to leave Malta undefended and allow someone to conquer it um, in some way. I, d I don't know how I would do that. Um, but anyway, let's crack on. So, similarly to before, let's do some investing, break down the shipyard, build regiment of horse because it's important I have that qualitative advantage. And let's also send ships out to interfere with the Barbary states, if at all possible. Just to hamper the recruitment of their units. And this shipyard becomes very important, but I'll explain why later. Um, is that a cobbled road? So we're going to bash out a few quick turns. We will try to seek... When I've got my... Uh, trade port up I will try to seek alliances with France and Spain in order to keep major powers happy and also to form a bit of a Catholic alliance against the the infidels for quote unquote in speaking strictly in historical terms uh, we lost one ship we took him out Right now, my navy does not matter, except fighting uncontested battles. I do not care if they live or die. Their job is to sail around and cause problems for the, for the uh, Barbary states to prevent them from generating ships to attack me. while we build up a bit of an army 
not a massive army, although it should probably want to do that. And wait for... Uh, wait for some line infantry to come online. It may even be worth... <clears throat> it may even be worth making some alliances now, actually. Um, just to try and stop any... We well, you know what Britain's like. Especially with me as Malta. Um, let's try and take some proactive steps. Diplomacy, mage nations. Um, Austria may be a good one. But they'll drag me into war with the Ottomans, which I don't necessarily want. Oh, they don't like me. Spain does like me. I wouldn't be surprised if many of the bigger nations don't really want to ally with me, because all I currently do is provide elements of risk. Just keep breaking their ports. Just stop them from rebuilding. May as well spend... Oh no, I can't, because I don't have a port. So our first step is going to be to take Tunis and subdue it. Hmm. I should also point out that I'm currently recording episodes for the period where I'm away. While I'll be... Oh yeah, by the time you see this video, I'll be away from my PC and these will be uploads that I've already recorded. And I'm in two minds about whether or not to drop my schedule down to three videos if this goes really badly or to uh, instead just unilaterally pick the next campaign that I, that I fancy playing um, but I'm not going to think about that now Come think of that when we get to it ok let's start trading with Britain just in order to keep them on our good side maybe also the Ottomans to try and placate them Just to give them a bit less of an impetus to uh, to actually attack me. Actually, two, you can, one ship will probably do both of these. But yes, yeah, so my strategy involves taking North Africa, but actually leaving Tripoli. I mean, a Tripoli produces nothing, um, so they don't really generate forces to attack me. But it's more about stabilising Tunis, spurring the development of their towns. So it is two more turns. So it's not building anything. You can already see the Brits are building an army, which no my luck will come to attack me. But what we have seen is that uh, with the Brits and with the Ottomans, you can buy a lot of time by just having something in the port and they will shimmy around, decide to attack, not attack, do lots of things. The Barbary States are there, attacking the port. As is tradition. Just a bunch of light galleys and one fifth rate. But then again, we're not really bound, we're not really banking on our uh, tax income anyway. I'm not sure where these guys came from. Probably our um, Algeria. We've got one more turn till we finish recruiting and before we have to really worry about anything. So I might build one militia, one unit of militia. Then it's hit in turn. Go on, France, take him out. Good guy, France. But then again, the Barbary States go last, and I haven't had a chance to interdict their ports. But yes, this is yeah. The, so this campaign has strings attached. It did work quite well last time, mainly because the, I didn't have to borrow, worry about the French and the Spanish, and they actually came out and helped keep my port free. I mean, like they, like they did now. Let's just take this brig. I don't mind breaking this shipyard, and I'll explain why. So, because we do not, and will not, have a building capable of researching naval technologies, like what you get here in Venice, we will not get that on the North African coast. Not even in Morocco. 
it's only Madrid, so only nations, you know, major nations, capitals that get it. But with the with the shipyard, you get hindered by not being able to recruit naval shore facilities to build new ports. But if you knock it down and replace it with a fishing dock, top tier fishing docks, I believe you can get all the way down the tree without any tech requirements and you can build fourth rates from there, which is quite useful. So let's put a couple of units of line, we don't need a massive army, and then we're going to go land and take Tunis. And this is where we're going to get used to burning lots of turns. Because we're going to have an angry population, we can't really go anywhere, and we're going to be trying to drive the growth of smaller towns. And we can't even go for a school as an early building. You have to go for, I personally find, you have to go for a religious building because the resistance, the religious intolerance, not the religious intolerance, religious unrest, that's it. That penalty you get from these states is huge. It's so big. So you you really have to go for the uh, religious building in order to stand a chance. So we're going to get one more turn of, of uh, line infantry. We've built everything we can build. Then we'll land and hit tuners. So that's why I don't mind raiding the shipyard. Because it will be damaged. But we're not going to repair it, we're going to knock it down anyway. And that also has benefits of providing improved um, population growth. Now, I'm saying all this as though the AI is predictable. I mean, this worked in my campaign when I last played it a month ago. But you know how the AI be. <laughs> Especially when the Barbary states get hammered. So, let's take our army. Let's take two of these ships out. Oh, actually no, I think I think the order I want to do is get the brig out, you guys in the port, get this army into the dark, get them embarked. I'm pretty sure those guys retreated to yeah, this shipyard. They're both light galleys, so I don't think they would interfere. But I'm, for, anyway, I'm just going to land them off the coast. And then... Tunis has a, quite a weak garrison, so just storm up and take it. Like here, we can't recruit anything better than galleys. It's tempting to go for the Royal Palace, but there's no point, because... We will want the money elsewhere. See, Austria's just gone and helped, has helped us out as well. So this, hopefully, I want to try to keep my, uh, my Catholic boys on my side. Rather than having them be my um, eternal enemy. And it's actually quite lucky that we're getting, we're, we're getting towards episode part 20 because, by God, it would be very handy to have a few episodes just to burn turns and get things done. Yeah, my previous strategy of ignoring uh, Tripoli completely did, did, in that campaign, seem to work. And I really didn't have to worry about the Barbary States causing me problems. Hey, someone tried to kill my general and he's been shot. Anyway... Let's go take Tunis. So needless to say, I am feeling a lot more positive about this campaign. Um, that's the whole reason why I played this campaign through about a month ago, because I anticipated... I can't remember what episode it was, maybe episode 12? I was sure I would lose. Um, I didn't pre-play the battle, because I didn't want to do that. But I played it, and in the video I was really surprised to win. Because in my head I'm like, right, okay, we'll lose. Then you'll start again and use this this campaign strategy. I thought, great, smashing, let's do that. But, but then I won. <laughs> so obviously they've got a mortar, even though I'm not so worried about losses of troops. Um, 
A, because we have so much more than them, and B, we've got a big war chest behind us. They might go for... Okay, let's run my general, because they usually like going for pikes. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so we're running our infantry in. Except for this, I think my previous problems when I've invaded North Africa is, I, is I've overestimated the threat and I've kind of thought I needed more infantry to get the job done than I actually had, than I needed, sorry. Okay, so let's ignore this garrison unit at the front because they're going to get killed pretty easy. Push these men up. Particularly hunting those mortars, I'm not so bothered about anything else. Even then, actually, they're aiming at the mortars. Let's knock out this populace. Don't need to worry about maximising kills or anything like that. So these men should kill them. Good. You guys ignore fighting. You can actually pivot like so. Barrel my cavalry in. run my pikes out of the way, I can get my general to chase them down, just for uh, completion. Form these guys up in case those infantry come back. And just take him out. Because they are just firelock arm populace, they're not We've lost one unit of cavalry. I am going to continue just to get some cheap experience on my horses, on my cavalry. So, just speed up time. Cheap experience on my cavalry and my general. Especially early game can be quite useful. If my general's bodyguard can accumulate said experience. There we go. I'm pretty sure it provides them. They do get stat bonuses for it. So it is in your interests. So run these guys over, don't engage, because they might have to run through my infantry to get there. Are you actually killing them more? Yeah, I was going to say, are they actually attacking them more of the round fit? So now, this isn't the... Uh, this might seem like a slam dunk, but it ain't. This is first part of the challenge to uh, hold what we've got. Damn right, it was decisive. But you start to run into the problem of... They hate our guts. Only minus four, that's pretty big. Let's rebuild the magistrate, let's build a conservatorium, and they, that might actually be enough knock down the shipyard because I can only build privateers and sixths and that's it until I can recruit this and it's going to be a very long time before I recruit this so may as well get rid of it let's put a barracks and let's build better roads I may even exempt you from tax it's 
see here. It's 32 turns until they get a new school. Until they get a new village. So this is going to be a while. Actually, we're slightly negative. So I may not exempt you from tax. Uh, mainly because if you want to rebel, you can bring it on. Because you're not going to get a very strong uh, force when you do rebel. Well, that obviously that turn projection for Kasserine will be improved when I replace it with a fishing dock. But then I can build a... You want an alliance? I want to say no. Because Poland gets pulled into lots of early wars. The money would be nice, but I don't want the diplomatic penalties of not backing them up. I'm hoping that every turn we can slowly improve our relations with the Ottomans through trade. I could give them something, like a state gift, to help smooth things over. Yeah, we can see the Barbary states there. Uh, they didn't give up. Okay, we've lost trade with Britain, which is bad, but that might not necessarily mean they're going to attack us. Or it might. Okay, let's try trade with the Italian states. Good Catholic country, which is nearby and may come to our defence. It's down to minus two. Let's build a governor's residence. Not very scared of these guys. I mean, they are camels, so they are cause for concern. But the camel nomads. 46 turns to Kasserine. I mean, education supposedly going to go up, but I don't see how that's possible. But yes, I think... Hmm, is there anything else I'd like to try and do? Spain. Come on! Honest Catholic... Oh, I started talking about honest Catholic brains. I'm like, but I'm Catholic! I'm one of the good guys, I swear. But right now, I think we're okay. We may have the usual British problem that we've had in ev every time we've started this campaign, and to be honest, every campaign since I started playing custom. Um, custom in the Darth Mod launcher. Every time I've started doing that, then they've started to really complain and throw a spanner in the works. So let's see where the camels go. They're probably going to come north, and if they do, that's fine. We have pikemen who would love, love, love to see them. So they've rebelled, and now they're fine again. Obviously, our income is very low, only 500, but we don't need much to build a fishery because I'm not bothered about attacking. I could probably go knock, probably could probably do with going to knock out that. Annoying little fellow. If he wants to push around me, that's fine. We've still got good armies here. That's not great. I should have thought about that, because now they're going to rebel. Because they've revolted. Oh, I'm such a goon. Either way, this is enough. I wanted to attack south to get rid of the devastation to armies bonus. But I can deal with a Barbary State's rebel army. Realistically, what are they going to have? They still want... They still want an alliance. No, but it's in my interest to keep Austria on side. So why would I ally with someone who's at war with someone who's important to me? Which doesn't make sense to me. they're going to run around my little in interception army so an assassin's knocked out my general as is tradition so let's take you guys I mean if I auto it how much damage are they going to do to us A bunch. You're going to stay where you are. I don't want them to push north. I want to cancel building this. And 
build a gun. Do I want to build a gun? Or do I want to build an opera house? To help keep them chill. I think I do. Jesus Christ, Bren, can you please just go and screw yourself? If, okay, if Britain lands and takes Malta now, then I officially kill this campaign. I, oh. But we've seen before what they do. It's just annoying that they do it so reliably and there's nothing I can do about it. So those rebels are going to come and attack me. Hopefully they're going to come and, come and attack the city. But I can't leave the city because I need to keep public order high. So I can't, you know, send my army out to go and attack them. Which is the reason why I cancelled building that shipyard because they are, that's prime raiding territory. For the Barbary States or for any rebel army. If you're building something, they will come and tear it down. It looks like the Barbary States are melting when they go towards the Italian States Navy. Yeah, fall back. So we've got a governor's residence. We're not at war with Britain yet. Is it possible for you to get to... I don't want to go near the city. I want you to go like this. It's slower, but it gets them to a port and I can try pick them up. I don't want to build anything and they're no longer rebelling so the, the strength is not going to go up. Let's repair the army encampment. Like, look, how am I supposed to st how am I supposed to stop that? Like, and they're friendly. We're positive 38. And they're they're happy they broke their trade agreement, so. Yep, yeah, there comes Britain. But we know how Britain does. But the scary thing is that army's coming for me somewhere. If it's not here, it's Tunis. If it's not Tunis, it's Algeria. And that navy's so big that uh, there's not anything, there's nothing that people can do about it. Like, there is no Spanish navy or French navy or whoever that can actually beat them. Trying. They're, tr they're trying to chase me down. No, no, you don't, Sonny. Not with artillery, you don't. <laughs> I've got to get ready for them to push north. And this is good because it gives us a chance to get rid of this resistance to occupation. I mean, it is unfortunate we're suffering from... Um, suffering from attrition. I think I don't think they can get to this here in two turns. So let's build it. If they get up here within a turn, I'd, if they break it, then they break it. But I'd rather they didn't like take it. Come on, Brian, chill out. Come on, Austria, gather a force and attack Britain for me, please. Although I'm pretty convinced th this campaign would be so much easier if I didn't play it in custom Darth Mod mode. I don't think... You know, I don't know if you need to play in custom to play as the bar... as the... as the, um... as the, uh... Knights of St. John. I think you do. You can see, there's another... there's a small... There you go, they've started to push north again. Got an opera house, and they don't definitely like us, probably because they're not it's, not it's a cultural thing 
I just want to get these guys back into a port and ship them up to Tunis. Okay, Desert Warriors versus Militia. They're handier at combat. The handier in combat, but they don't shoot as far or have as much ammo. Get a couple units of militia. So what's these? That's camels and you're a mixed bag. So next turn, get I can get these guys back up to Tunis. to probably cancel the fishery again. Because they'd probably break it. This is part of the fun of the Barbary States. You've got a, you've got a, uh, a city up there that hates you and can't stand you. Um, when I get my pikemen back, I'll feel a lot better. Mainly because camels are a thing, and I don't, don't, don't do it, Ottomans. Don't go pick up a, a navy and attack me, please. But despite the British, the British axe hanging over our head, I'm actually feeling. Okay, about starting this campaign. Oh, they're just going to transit. Okay. Sounds good to me. But where are the rebels going to go? They're going to come break stuff. That's fine. Um, cash is not my main concern. So let's go get a brig. Pick the men up. Get the brig over to my port. Disembark the troops, because eventually they will come after us in the capital, and that's okay, I just want to be ready. Um, let's take this navy back to Malta. Stay. Let's spend the money on a bit of replenishment and let's build a gun team. Yeah, let's just build a port because I think next time they're gunning to come straight after us. Okay. The main thing is that their the the population is not rebelling anymore. So they're rebels. The rebellion is not growing in strength. That's the main bonus. Then any extra money we get, we can pour into roads and into the naval ports to help expand that. You can already see there's a lot of firepower knocking around the Mediterranean in a, na in a naval sense. Yeah, these first few turns are fairly formative and they have attacked us and that's perfect so, so i'm going to put a cut in the episode here so thanks for watching guys hope you've enjoyed and we'll see you next time for the battle outside tunis cheers everyone